with switching between Rhino and Revit, it's yeah. just how you save it. So you always want to just go here. You're going to have to kind of go back and forth. You have to go just to export. And then you would just save it as, which one was it? Which one is it? Or was it save as? Might be save as. And then you, God, I don't have it on here. No, because you don't have Rhino. So. Yeah, because I don't have Rhino. So when, if she had Rhino, there would be a um, an option that says export as, um, I think uh, it's a specific file that it's would. A DWG. I think it's a DWG. Um, that turns it into line work because it's gonna. What you're trying to do is change the file type to something like AutoCAD because Rhino and Revit don't necessarily run on the same engine. They run on two different engines, so you need to be able to change the coding from. Revit to AutoCAD, which has a much similar um, uh, engine, than to, to Rhino. That, that's why it's a, it's it's a, it's kind of confusing because you have to go from uh, Revit to AutoCAD, then switch the file type to I think. It was H H M? Um, yeah, it's some weird file like H M something. And then you save that onto your desktop, and then you open that in in Rhino. And even then, like if you don't have your walls connected, if you don't have everything preset in your Revit file, um, it it can still mess with your project depending on uh, what units you import it into, what um, where it is that you place it. Um, that's why I've always said like model in 3D, like in Rhino, which is a lot more efficient, but then import into Revit. Because if you're gonna export, it's just a lot more messier. But it's possible, and I'll have um, Mark uh, show how to, because it's a lot easier to do topography in, um, in Rhino. So I'll, I'll have Mark uh, sh Bring a demonstration of how to import and export from different pro uh, from different programs. But yeah, she just doesn't have Rhino. Yeah, fortunately, it's on my Mac computer. Um, anyway, so we wanted to look up now interior. So I don't know if you remember from last time of how to create just the wall. And I didn't make mine close, so now I just want to edit my uh, wall type. And we're going to go up to our trim, extend corners. And then there you go, makes it closed. And then we can't forget our floors. So you go architecture floors. And we're going to go our pick walls tool. And we want to make sure yeah, if they're on the outside, all the floors are on the outside. If they're not, just click um, just click on them and then just put space bar and it flips them. Or these little arrows here, and it'll flip them. Press the little green check mark, say OK. And then now let's make a roof. So this one's going to ask us to go up to level 2 since we only have level 1. And we want an overhang of about one foot. And again, it's going to be the pick line tool up here at the top. And we're going to select our walls, making sure that our roof goes to the outside of our walls. Press OK, and it's going to ask you to, if you want your walls to attach to the roof. You want to say yes. And right now, this is what it really is going to look like. Go back to our first level floor plan, and we're going to add in some doors. Just build yourself a little generic house. Yep. You know. There you go. So 
when we look at it, it's going to look like this guy. Now you want interior walls now, correct? So actually what we're going to do is we're going to back to level one. And it's basically, it's basically the same thing. It's just if you want um, like smaller walls, you're just going to go down to under our properties and we're going to look for our partition walls, interior partition walls. And they'll give you different sizes here. And it also tells you the, out, the rating, the fire protection rating here. So it's like one hour partition, or one hour uh, rating, and there's two hour. There's also other options here that you can choose. So you can choose a, a retaining wall, uh, and you can choose like a glass wall if you want, just a curtain, glass curtain wall. Or there's masonry. And then again, if you remember from last time, um, we also you can also edit the type always, and you just generally want to duplicate before you edit. Um, but it's really easy to just edit. You just press edit, and then under next to structure under materials, just want to click the little box so that way we can bring up our materials and we can change up our materials. So we want an interior wall, correct? Let's go with the, uh, let's go with the three. So now it's, it's basically the same thing as making the walls. You can time it, type a dimension. Yeah. Yep, you can always type a dimension. You just go, at, you set your angle. And once you set your angle, and obviously it's going to give you that little dotted line whenever you're perpendicular or parallel to a line, um, you just type in, so say I want it to be 20 feet, and then there you are. There's 20 feet. And I want to change this to 30. And then there you go. It's going to automatically snap to the nearest wall when you come near it. Um, So now, if we go into our 3D view and we want to look inside for what we have so far, you're going to go under properties and go section box. It's going to bring up this little guy here, this little box, and we click on it. It's going to bring up all these little arrows on the side, and that's going to be for which side you want to push in and out. So now we can see those rooms in there. Under what again? Section box. So if you just click off of this, it's a generic view. You just go under the properties where it's a 3D view. You scroll down a little, right to section box here. Or you can actually change your views. Uh, down at the bottom bar, you break it. The bars. Uh, yeah, to change your views. So you have different variances and views. Um, it's just like right now. Um, you have wireframe, you have shaded, you have realistic, rendered. If you have a really good computer, you can always work in render, which is pretty intense if you think about it. You have something that's rendering every single time you edit. Um, usually don't want to do that because it does get stressful on your computer. But um, yeah, like if you want to switch to wireframe, if prefer to work in wireframe. I personally like to work in wireframe just because you have a sense of the entire thing all together, but you have to be extremely organized. Um. So what I just did right here is I just changed some of the material types so you can see how it looked in a uh, realistic view. And this is masonry, but you can always change it to anything else that we have here. Um, so say I want brick because I want it red, it's going to show that. In a realistic view, it's going to show what it's going to look like. How the four, um, we officially render it. Okay. And it always takes the, like, the 
rendered version of whatever it is that you're rendering and dumbifies it as much as it can when you're in this view. So just because it looks blocky and stuff, uh, and stuff like that, doesn't mean it's going to look like that once you hit the render button. It's just rendering it and changing it to the dumbest form so that it won't crash your computer. Alright, now we can start to put in some furniture in here. So if we go under architecture components, there's going to be all these options. So for right now, I have some trees in here, parking space, and a desk. Um, you probably won't have anything in there if you click it right now. Um, you probably have it loaded, too many items. But if you go, you can always go onto the load family. And we go, there's a multiple options actually for this one. Uh, so there's furniture, planting, um, specialty equipment. So that's going to be kind of like um, toilets and showers, bathtubs. Um, so right now, let's go under furniture. Oh, and there's also entourage. So that's where actually we're going to find people. We can start to put people in here. And then also, if you don't see what you want, um, there's always the option to use Autodesk Seek. I don't know if you remember from last time we talked about that. Um, you can always look up anything that you want to actually put in there and then just download the file. Alright, so let's go some tables. We'll put in a kitchen table here. And there's all these different types of tables that we have here. So let's, so this one already comes preloaded with chairs. But that looks like a lot of chairs, so maybe I don't want that one. So let's go a dining table round. It's going to show up as that little circle, and that's going to be our little dining table. And now I'm going to want some chairs to go with it. So we're going to go to furniture and seating. So I'm going to go with this guy, the, um, this chair right here. I'm going to press open, and then we can see the little chair there. And I want to rotate it, so again, I just press the space bar, and it'll rotate it for you. And just hit modify to get out of that. Um, out of that, and there's our little table. Idea. Simple, efficient, quick way to model. Obviously, this might not be the look you're looking for, but I can guarantee you that most things that are that basic, or that just if you want a table, if you go on Auto Desk Seek, there's also um, I think it's called Revit Warehouse. Um, it's just people that. Just what they do during the day is just model things, just make things, and they'll put these on, on these websites which are open source, and you can just download their, their, uh, their families. Those are called families, which also are known as components. Um, and you can download them so you can add them to your uh, Revit uh, library, and you'll always have access to them. They're free. Most of the time, I would say just go for the free websites. Uh, I don't think you ever have to pay for um, modeling, unless it's something extremely, extremely detailed. I think there is what like um, companies have like Revit files like, for furniture. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you some of them do create them themselves. Uh, the one on Autodesk Seek, those are actually other companies that have created them, but they decided to share it with the public as well, uh, not just limit it to their own firm. Yeah, it depends. On, it also depends on whether you need to firm that uses Revit. Most companies nowadays use Revit for their construction documentation, and they require a standard set of doors, windows, and furniture sometimes. And that kind of stuff sometimes is kept very secret because it, it can also identify each um, each company separately. So you have this, I don't know, three foot door, and then you have a I don't know, a five or six foot door, which would belong to 
a company that does much bigger. Uh, companies. Yeah. So that, that, that in itself can identify a company. So sometimes that's kept very secret and you will only get those if you join that company. But most, I would say most, just leave it as open source because it's for the Revit community and for the design community. And then uh, some of the things that we're missing here is a ceiling. So we have the option to either just leave it as is or we can actually build a ceiling. I'm going to build a ceiling here. So what we want to do is we want to go to ceiling and then um, level one floor plan since we only have one level. And here it's going to show you the roof and everything. This is looking as if we were to cut a, a four foot level, a four foot height and looking upwards. A floor plan is going to cut at four feet of height and look downwards. So anything above that you won't see, but if you go into ceiling plan, you'll see that. No? Yeah, it's like a worm's eye. Yeah. So we can just do automatic sketching since we only have, actually, yeah. So it's going to just do it by room. So I can just click on the room and it's going to bring up this acoustic ceiling system that we have here, or I'm sorry, compound ceiling system. And you, again, you can change the type of ceiling that you have. Uh, yeah, it's gonna give you these few types, but of course you can always edit it to change that type. All right, so we're done there with the ceiling. And if we go back into our 3D view, so we see that it's a little bit off actually. So what we wanna do is we wanna change the head height so we want to make it 10 feet, because our new walls are 10 feet tall. Again, simple, quick, efficient way of modeling. And then here's up here, I mean, this is where you can start to get into AC systems and piping. You generally don't need that until what? Do you need them? When do you start using that? Systems. Systems. Fourth, fourth, year. Year. fourth year. So you start using that in fourth year, um, learning how to integrate that into your building. Right now, it's not so much important, um, especially us. Like, that's not important for us right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is just different things you get to know. Um, one thing I haven't shown you yet is how did you use a camera? Oh. <laughs> so what we have here is we have a default view, a camera, and we have a walkthrough. Um, a walkthrough is a little bit tricky to use. Um, what it is is you choose, select multiple cameras and you, it's like as if you're pretending to walk through, um, but it's a little bit tricky to actually get started and put down. So right now we're gonna do a camera and it's gonna give you this little camera icon, uh, mouse right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click where we wanna see everything and then it's gonna give us three lines. So this is gonna be our range of view. All right, and so, and I just want to note, if I put this right here, there's going to be an issue. It's, it's going to cut off all of that in the corner right there, right in this corner right here. So you always want to go past where you actually want to see. And there's what our building is going to look like. And if you go into a realistic, it looks a little dark, but that's because we don't have too many windows right now. But. And then if you want to edit that view, you can always extend it out, trim it down, however you like. Next. Yeah. Um, this helps so much when you're rendering or when you're like photoshopping things in. You don't have to mess with the camera, mess with the angle, whereas, you know, how big, it's just like, literally just hit click and then you've got yourself a, a rendered view of something. I, I make I make so many so many Photoshop renderings and so many just like 
instantly just from that because you get an instant view of what you're looking at and that kind of stuff is at least for when I used to work is invaluable because they were more of a design firm so having ways to look at things from an eye level in a in a room immediately was so much more efficient than right now just because you would have to have tons of different uh, settings properly in Rhino to have a proper view. And this is just so much quicker. All right, um, next thing I want to do with you guys is I want to show you how to make a massing. So I'm going to, right now I'm going to delete my roof and let's find my ceiling, if I can find it. I might have to go to 3D to get rid of it. There it is. All right, so I'm gonna delete it just over this kind of, or you can say okay. our living room. So yeah. our living room would, dining room would be if this were to be a house. Um, so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into floor plan level two, and it's gonna bring up this. This is gonna be our shaded area, so it's kind of showing uh, what's below it. You can always turn that off by selecting underlay, and press none, apply. Um, actually these walls are going up a little bit because they're connecting up to the roof. Little butts. What we're gonna do is I wanna bring back that level one. And then we wanna go under the massing and site tool. And we're gonna go place mass. Let's see if we have our mass. Or was it placed in mass? Which one was it? So these are a whole bunch of different types of massing that we can just easily put in place. So I want a dome right now. Because why not? Because why not? <laughs> I'm going to press open. And here's gonna be our dome. All right. And if we click on it, then we can always edit it, edit the sizing. So we want it, we'll say 10, 10 feet and, oh, is that the center point? Yeah, the center point. Okay, let's see if we can. Oh, here you go. I'm sorry. That's the radius that I need to change. There you go, radius. So let's change that to 10 feet. Can't make dome type. <laughs> it's not gonna be my friend. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, so when I look at this in a 3D view, it's gonna show me this guy here. Now you can hand create these uh, models, you don't have to do it in place. In that case, you do the um, in place one instead and create your own. Um, I just wanna show you this view just to be really quick. Um, so this one I feel is a little bit short, so let's give it an offset of about three feet. That's 30. All right. Actually, I lied. It looks better. Yep, that actually looks a little bit better because if we see right at our wall height, goes right above it. And one thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to click on this and I'm going to go back to massing the site and I want to make it a now a curtain system. We're going to click on all of our walls that we're going to want to change it. So if you see, if we're to get rid of we're supposed to click both the sides of the hemisphere. So it's section cut, so we're not gonna see this other side here, but you can see those two are highlighted. And I'm gonna say create system. And there is our dome. Now your mass is still gonna be underneath there, so it's gonna be this kind of bright purple. So we're gonna click on our dome here. And press delete. 
You can click in here. Can I click green tree? Yeah. I can't tell what I clicked. There you go. So now it goes back to our normal window view. It's going to be a normal color, not such a bright purple. All right. So now if we go back into ceiling plan, now we're going to create a ceiling, our ceiling around it. Um, so we're going to architecture, ceiling, and we're going to do automatic sketching to go around that room. But actually, if you see it, does not going to go around our dome that we've created. So we're going to go sketch instead. We're going to do the pick walls to get some of these walls really quickly in there. And we're going to trim up some of them, get it all connected. So this is the shape that I would have created on the automatic sketching, but what we want to do is now we want to eliminate this part. So we're still going to go to the pick walls tool. Actually, it's not going to give me a wall. So we're going to have to automatically create it just the line. I can put pick line now. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's switch to pick lines, and we can create it this way. There you go. And then press OK. And it, see, it shows that there's a problem here with these lines. So it says lines are intersected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our trim tool. And we're going to click on those two lines to trim them up and make them connected instead of intersecting. Press OK. And then there's our ceiling. Again, it's a little low, so we just want to bring it up to our 10 feet. There we go, we have a dome over it. And then finally to finish it off, we're gonna finish it off with our roofing. So we're gonna go to level one, or um, excuse me, we're gonna go to level one ceiling. And we're gonna go to our roof. It's going to tell us we want to go to level two instead, not ceiling. And again, we can do our pick lines tool with a one foot overhang. All right. And I'm actually going to turn off some of these slopes that we have here. So I'm going to put up these shorter sides. So get rid of that check mark on the defined slope. And if I press OK already, there's going to be one issue. So it's, we want our walls to attach. So press OK. And that issue is our roof is going to go through our dome. So we need to fix that now. And actually, with our roof, mm, I'm going to lower the slope a little. So if you click on our roof, it's going to show up our roof, and then you go under slope. I'm going to make that a 3 by 12, so 3 feet up, I mean, excuse me, 3 inches up before every 12 feet. And it's going to lower it. Okay. So I'm going to edit the footprints. We're going to go back into our level 2 so that we can see it. Then we're going to go our pick lines tool. And now I'm just going to select our little walls here, so that way we can have it, oops, have our roof not go through our dome. Oops, so I'm not, I don't have a closed loop, and it, again, it's going to give you those little orange highlights to see what's wrong. So I'm going to press continue, and I need to go to our trim tool, and then just trim all these up. Um, looks like it's good. All 
And then we have another issue. Nope, that didn't work. Why won't it work? Let's try this again. Oh, I see what's wrong with it. So what's wrong with, what, why I couldn't make it is because there's a slope on them. That's going to be our issue. So we want to make sure we get rid of that. So click on each one and just get rid of the defined slope part. There you go. So we want our roof to attach to our base. And that's the only issue is right now is still at that default nine inches. So we're going to bring it down to a three, apply, and there you go. And you have that little space in there to get all of your systems. And our wall here is a little bit tall, so we're going to say attach to top or base. So we're going to click on that wall, and then we're going to click on our roof. On the interior. Oh, okay. I'm confused. Why won't you go? Go on the floor plan. Okay. And then check the roof. Check the roof. Oh, okay. That might be an issue. Yeah. That one is on the interior. There you go, it's on the interior. So, we want to just move that out to the exterior there. Okay, attach our walls, 3D, and voila. Now we're going to take our section box off, and then there we have our building. And now you're fine here. Uh, Does anyone have some questions they want to ask? Okay. Can I create my own mask? Uh, yes. So you're able to create your own mask. Hold on, give me one second. Let me switch this to brick. So if we want to create our own mask, we're just going to go into Mask and Siding, and we're going to go, I believe it's in place mask. So it's in, in place mask, and what you're going to do is you get all these options for how you want to create your mask. So again, if I want to create like a circle or something, so I get my, won't it let me? Do I have to be in plan? There you go. I'm not on the right tool. Oh, no. There you go. So there's my circle. And then I can create a form. Hmm. 
right, you have to kind of just play around with it right now. I'm not re quite remembering how to do it. But it's under this system, and it's the same thing if you want to create a whole system over it. You can create a wall, you can create um, a glass system. So if I say finish, I click on it. Uh, go masking, and I can create this as a wall if I wanted to. All right, and now you can see it is a solid void. And let's see if I can try to delete the mess. Gonna work. Absolutely. I deleted nope. the wall. I deleted the wall. Actually. see underneath it. There you go. And then we have our wall. Or our dome, our solid dome. Yeah. Uh, but I've used this to create, um, you know, like various like tilting walls and different forms. I've also created handmade, hand created domes is what I've done here. Um, not just it, just take it from a file. I didn't do that. I actually created it to the perfect size that I wanted it to, and there, from there, you're able to, you know, kind of play with the form, kind of similar to a rhino, where you're able to take points and push it up and down. Um, it's a little easier to do in rhino for the massing, but it's possible to do it in here. Have they released Grasshopper for uh, Revia? Yes. Really? Yes, it's called Dynamo. I've actually been working very closely with Mark and the developer of Dynamo. I'm, a, I'm the, one of the original beta <coughs> testers for the system that's called Dynamo. Dynamo's, I'm sure you guys know what Grasshopper is. So think of that system, but for uh, Revit. That system is it's, it's like at its earliest stage right now. Um, you have to know pretty well how to do syntax and uh, coding because if you think of what uh, Grasshopper is, it's a system file in the shape of a linear uh, command system that can generate form depending on those various systems that you plug in. The problem is that with Revit and its different engine that it runs on, it doesn't take commands as something imaginative. So if you tell it to select a line, it wants to be extremely precise. With uh, Rhino, the way that the coding is, uh, is set up is that it's extremely loose based on the, um, the creation of the form because there's no sense of down and up. There's only X, Y, and Z. Here there's an up, down, left, and right. And it's extremely precise on angles, uh, which way your north and south is. So you can use it, and your uh, uh, Dynamo is, ex uh, is open source if you want to mess with it. Um, I've been I I've been working with uh, Dynamo to create systems like checking um, weight on a wall, like um, constantly checking um, uh, like stud pressure. Loads, load pressure, um, creating a structural system, like, uh, like, yeah, it's a, it, I use it for engineering purposes, engineering, just so I don't have to constantly keep going back to people. It's like, okay, here's my model, check it. It's like, no, I created a system in Dynamo, a checklist almost, where it'll run it and it'll check these extremely precise details, and it'll give me a result. But the difference is that it's not it's not design based. It's more checkbox based. So if you tell it to create a form, it'll just go off of the check marks that you set out for it. So it's like create a circle, check. Create a dome, check. Create a solid, check. Instead of create a uh, make a circle, create a dome, 
and make it solid. Just a difference in that. So, how you were saying it was, it's written code then? Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's like these, uh, the code boxes. Uh-huh, and it's written? Yeah, it's syntax, basically. You need to learn how to talk in uh, programming. So, I don't know, like, um, the most basic one is one, which is activate. Does it let you, um, is there an option for you to input? So you can't manipulate surfaces in syntax? Oh, yeah. You can? Yeah, you can. So, yeah, but you just gotta know the syntax, the I proper see. syntax. So there's possibilities for extreme parametric design then? Yes. Okay. Yes, but it's, like I said, it's extremely difficult. Mostly because uh, Dynamo is ex just barely started. Fair enough. It's, 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 bar it's barely new. And I was lucky enough to be a beta tester, <clears throat> like a very early beta and alpha tester. But, I mean, if you want to learn it, it's a lot of fun. And, I can make that building in like 10 minutes with structural design, a structural model, everything that we just did, I can make that in like 10 minutes by using Dynamo, but that's because I know syntax. Are there any examples out there in you know, buildings that have been like parametric buildings? If you just Google Dynamo buildings and it'll show you the their process. Thank you. I think that's it for now today. We're going to try again to have another class after our uh, winter break, spring break? Yeah. <laughs> spring break, excuse me. Um, we'll try to get Mark in here as well. He was out sick today, so fortunately, good night. Mm -hmm. This is just, this just stay tuned. Uh, we'll let you know. You guys all